Hello, my name is Shelly Pate and I'm a PhD student at the University of Tennessee. Today I'll be speaking about cotton seedling diseases. The first step in knowing what's going on in your field is making sure that you properly diagnose the problem. To do this, it's very important to know the variety of cotton planted, the time of planting, what seed treatments were applied to the seed, when and where you applied fungicides, herbicides, or pesticides, and the growth stage of the plant. It's also very important to look at your field surroundings. Make sure that you look for stunted growth of the seedlings or wilted seedlings. It is also beneficial to dig up seedlings to look for symptoms and signs. And if you're still unsure of what's going on, send in a sample to your local extension agent or at the West Tennessee Research and Education Center. In Tennessee, there are four pathogens known to cause seedling diseases in cotton. And today we will be addressing each of them separately. The Labiopsis specicula is the causal agent of black root rot. This pathogen is initially known as the time stealer because it delays growth of the seedling early on in the season, but can grow out of infection with warmer temperatures. It also is known for causing a cortical rot in the vascular tissue. When looking for signs and symptoms, you will see a darkening of the taproot and lateral roots or a loss of lateral roots overall. You will also be able to see darkening within the vascular tissue. Sorsion is caused by Rhizotonia solana. This pathogen is most commonly associated with causing pre-emergent stamping off, which means that the seedling dies before emerging past the soil line. When looking at sorsion, it is also common to observe reddish-brown lesions on the stem right above the soil line. Those lesions will coalesce, girdling the seedling and causing it to fall over. You can also see in the field with the hand lens brown fungal growth on the stem. Oftentimes when dealing with cotton seedling diseases, there is often more than one pathogen present at one time. For example, as you can see, the root system is tan in discoloration and when felt, feels spongy to the touch. This is classic pythium. And also you can see the girdling reddish brown lesion caused by Rhizotonia solana. This has also caused the seedling to start to coalesce and fall over. Fusarium really likes to move into the seedling when initial infection by other pathogens has already taken place. So it is hard to diagnose just symptoms based off of Fusarium infection alone. However, it is common to see stunting of the seedlings early on in the growing season and wilting as the growing season continues. Finally, the last pathogen known to cause cotton seedling diseases in Tennessee are Pythium species. Pythium species are most commonly associated with pre- and post-emergent stamping off. They can also cause a seed rot which prevents germination overall. When looking at the root system, it is very common for the roots to look tan in discoloration as well as water soaked. It is very important to remember, with cool, wet planting seasons come seedling diseases. So what I can recommend is delaying planting time at least until the soil temperature is at least 65 degrees for three consecutive days at your desired planting temperature. Plant resistant varieties, and I cannot stress this enough, always, always, always utilize a seed treatment. Seed treatments are the first line of defense when dealing with cotton seedling diseases. We recommend looking for a seed treatment that contains at least one or two active ingredients known to produce good efficacy across control for all pathogens. I also want to remind you, when sampling for nematodes, make sure to pay attention to populations of root knot nematode and reniform nematode. When present in the soil, they are known to cause increased severity in association with cotton seedling diseases. And for management recommendations on nematodes, Again, delay planting time when possible, at least 65 degrees for three consecutive days before time of planting. Also, nematode and pathogen populations can be more prevalent when fields are continuously planted in cotton. So please, utilize crop rotation when applicable. Finally, make sure that all of your planting and harvesting equipment is properly sterilized to reduce the amount of pathogen inoculation and nematodes you're moving from field to field. At this time, I'll turn it over to Ty Smith, our PhD student, to talk to you about foliar diseases of cotton. Hello, my name is Ty Smith. I'm a PhD candidate with the University of Tennessee working in plant pathology. I will be discussing cotton foliar, leaf, stem, and bowl diseases. We already covered seedling diseases in the prior section. 
In this section, we will look at diseases that affect the leaves, stems, flowers, and bowls. An important diagnostic tool when determining what disease is in the field is where the disease is located on the plant. The diagram shown here gives the general location for the most common diseases that we have in Tennessee cotton. The first diseases that we will cover are the foliar diseases. Alternaria leaf spot, Stemphilium leaf spot, and Cercospora leaf spot are commonly referred to as the leaf spot complex in cotton. These diseases are quite hard to distinguish one from the other in the field. Alternaria leaf spot usually forms on senescing leaves. Lesions are small and brown with dark purple margins. Mature lesions can sometimes fall out, giving a shot hole appearance. The disease is usually present in late season cotton when plants are under drought and nutrient stress. Usually, this disease does not cause yield loss, but reducing plant stress, such as irrigation, proper fertility, especially the use of potassium, can help mitigate this disease. The second disease associated with the leaf spot complex is Stemphilium leaf spot. Stemphilium leaf spot starts as small circular lesions that progressively become larger. Lesions can sometimes fall out, also giving a shot hole appearance. This disease starts in the upper canopy at the leaf margins and progressively moves inward. Similar to other leaf spots, it is mostly present in nutrient deficient cotton, especially with a lack of potassium. Avoiding drought stress and having adequate amounts of potassium can help prevent this disease. The third disease in the leaf spot complex is Cercospora leaf spot. Lesions start as reddish, small lesions and then slowly turn white to light brown in the center. If lesions are large enough, they can form concentric rings similar to another foliar disease target spot. The main difference in Cercospora leaf spot is that it is found throughout the canopy. Maintaining good plant vigor with irrigation and proper fertilization can help prevent Cercospora leaf spot. The leaf spot complex of diseases can be present together when cotton is drought and nutrient stressed. Rarely do they cause yield loss, but sometimes they can be mistaken for other more damaging diseases. Ascochyta blight, commonly referred to as wet weather blight, is a foliar pathogen in cotton that is present mostly in early season, but it can be found late season if the environment is conducive. Lesions are normally light brown with dark red to purple margins. Wet weather blight is present when cool and cloudy conditions are present over a number of days. To prevent early season wet weather blight, use a fungicide treated seed and avoid planting in cool, wet soil and weather. Target spot is a foliar disease that is commonly found in reproductive stage cotton. Target spot infestations occur after prolonged periods of warm, wet, and cloudy conditions are observed and the canopy doesn't have time to dry out. Lesions start as small and red and they're found in the low to mid sections of the canopy. As lesions mature and become larger, they develop concentric rings or a target spot appearance that gives it its name. Infected leaves can prematurely defoliate and in some cases lead to yield loss depending on the growth stage at infestation. Effective use of plant growth regulators and proper row spacing can help mitigate infestations. Target spot is responsive to fungicides in multiple classes. Treatments made later in the season or when lesions are present and prior to cutout offer the most efficient control. Treatments made after cutout are usually not recommended as late season infestations of target spot can sometimes help when defoliating before harvest. Bacterial blight, also known as angular leaf spot, is a bacterial disease that can infect not only the leaves but as well the bowls as well. Lesions start as small water-soaked spots on bowls and leaves that can become progressively larger. 
On leaves, the spots are confined to the veins, which gives them the angular spot appearance. In severe cases, this can cause yield losses due to defoliation and bowl rot or shedding. Bacterial blight can overwinter on old stalks and debris, so destroying seasonal debris is a good strategy when trying to mitigate bacterial blight. Also, try to plant resistant cultivars when possible, and you can look up resistant cultivars on the UT Crops website. Bowl rot is a common term used whenever rotting of the bowl is occurring in the field. There are many different pathogens that can cause bowl rotting. Lesions usually start as water soaked and progressively turn the bowl brown and rotten. Any damage to the bowl, such as mechanical or insect feeding, can be used for the pathogens to infect the bowls. Planting pathogen-free seed, effective use of plant growth regula regulators, and regulating nitrogen fertilizers all help with mitigating bowl rot in the field. Insect control in reproducing stage cotton also limits the damage where bowl rot pathogens can enter. Fusarium and verticillium wilt symptoms can be present at any stage throughout the growing season. Infection timing will determine impact to yield with earlier infections becoming more damaging over time. Wilt symptoms can first look like necrotic damage around the margins of the leaves that progressively move inwards. Cutting the stem and looking for vascular discoloration is needed to diagnose fusarium and verticillium wilts. Planting resistant cultivars when available and always use correct seeding rates to mitigate the spread or infection of wilt diseases. In fields prone to infections, rotating out of cotton into a grain crop, such as corn, can help reduce infection potential in later years. The cotton leaf roll dwarf virus, or CLRDV, is a viral disease recently observed in Mid-South cotton. The disease is vectored by cotton aphids and it has many different symptoms, making visual diagnosis difficult. Leaf reddening, drooping, wilting, crinkling, red veins, stacked terminals, stunting, red stems, and leaf bronzing are all symptoms associated with CLRDV. Research has also shown the presence of the disease in cotton plants that do not exhibit any symptoms, making it difficult to determine how widespread the disease actually is. Current research is ongoing to determine the impact on yield the disease has, how widespread the disease is, and if there are any control strategies to help mitigate infection and decrease spread of the virus. When trying to properly diagnose disease problems, there are a number of different things to know or find out. Knowing what variety is planted can help when determining if it is resistant to a certain disease. Knowing if a seed treatment was applied and what was in the seed treatment is also crucial to determining disease presence. Some problems can be nutritional issues that mimic disease, so knowing your soil type and what fertility is helps distinguish disease from fertility problems. Planting date is important to know and what the conditions were like as some diseases favor earlier or later planting as well as warmer or cooler conditions. Some diseases can be mimicked by pesticide damage, especially with herbicides. Knowing what was applied and when can be helped when diagnosing a disease is actually herbicide damage. Always examine whole plants to determine if a problem is localized or throughout the whole plant, as well as what the pattern of the symptoms in the fields look like. This includes digging up plants and splitting stems and bowls. Take a lot of pictures so that they can be referenced when describing a problem to someone else or to an extension agent or specialist. For further diagnostic help, utcrops.com has guides for determining what diseases look like and how to diagnose the problems. Thank you.